All right, welcome to this video. Uh, this is what I do in the dead of winter. Make up flyers, go out, do preaching. As regular as I can. If you're in the UK, come and visit Scotland to go out. Uh, I might be visiting Northern England quite soon. So, uh, get in contact if you want to join me giving out some of these flyers or street preaching. <clears throat> um, this flyer I made up the other week obviously is to do with the pagan festivals. We've got Jeremiah 10 explaining uh, the pagan side of things, the, the nations. And then we've got John 10 explaining what Yeshua fulfilled. He came to fulfill the, the Jewish festivals. So you can look through this flyer, I'll just scroll down very gradually and uh, you can just stop it and have a look through it. Uh, we did a video on this the other day about the false messiah versus the true messiah. you got to be truly a Satanist if you can't see uh, the differences there. It's my hope that real Jews will see the difference and uh, one time Scotland even after the Reformation and well it used to be a solely lunar calendar in the UK but after uh, and I believe they kept a, a lunar you know the, the, the solely lunar calendar and the lunar Sabbath before the Roman calendar was introduced for trading um, it all kind of happened simultaneously around the Reformation time just as Scots law is based on Roman law, this is how the Romans conquered Scotland, not through the sword, but through law. And England and Wales now uh, used to be ruled according to the Reformation through the common law, but they're even, even losing this uh, trade at the moment. So you can look through that. This is where the, the, the true birth of Yeshua Jesus Christ is and this is the fake Messiah the fake festivals demonic and so made a video about the origin of the Scots I think it was about a year ago or so uh, so this will so make this the second part of that that study go into a little bit more history a little bit more depth about that um, just got this study finished quite recently uh, some of the Celtic tribes have a trait of erecting these standing stones like in Stonehenge and you can really trace the Celts from the land of Israel uh, the Celts go under many many different names and titles uh, one of them around the area of, of Sky there Tyranians see the pillars of Hercules, North Africa, into Spain. This is from the decoration of Arbroath in 1320. Um, we'll read through all this. Um, and so it's not, when you, when you look at these ancient documents of the Scots and where they're from, uh, it, it might amaze quite a few people. So who are the Scots? First of all we'll look at St Columba and the history of the tiny island of Mull uh, and then there's an even smaller island called Iona barely three miles long by one mile wide if you really want to get an even smaller island uh, go to Staffa that's just a little uh, tiny little island where uh, there's been legends of giants there some of the giant tribes were mixed in unfortunately with some of the Celtic tribes um, so it had an influence out of all proportion to its size on the establishment of Christianity and throughout the world this is where Christianity in Britain was really uh, started from the Isle of Iona Iona's place in history was secured in 563 
when St. Columba arrived on its white sandy beaches with 12 followers and built his first Celtic church, established a monistic community, once settled the Irish monks set about converting most of pagan Scotland, which included the Picts in northern England to biblical Christian faith, having a three-day spiritual battle with the Pictish king, which the Christian God won. Hallelujah. Thusly, even today, Scotland still remains a Christian nation, right? Hallelujah. Iona's fame as a missionary centre, an outstanding place of learning, eventually spread throughout Europe, turning it into a place of pilgrimage for several centuries to come. Iona became a sacred isle where kings of Scotland, Ireland and Norway were buried. And we'll look at some more history of these countries. Who was St. Columba? Born of royal blood in Ireland, uh, Scotia as it was called then. He was, or Caledonia actually, I remember it being called Caledonia before that. He was the grandson of the Irish King Niall. He left Ireland for Scotland not as a missionary, but as an act of self-imposed penance for a bloody mess he caused at home. He had upset the King of Ireland by refusing to hand over a copy of the Gospels he had allegedly copied. This led to a pitched battle in which Columbus' warrior family prevailed. Can you imagine that? <laughs> you know, all the copy-pasting we do on the internet and, uh, you know, copies of things that we get today and uh, that, that was like a capital offence back in these days. He was only trying to carry out his uh, mission as a Christian. Full of remorse for his actions, the deaths he had ultimately caused, he fled, finally settling on Iona as the first place he found from where he could see his native Ireland. One of the features of the island is even called the hill with his back to Ireland. Almost 1,000 years later, in the Declaration of Arbroath, a united Scotland uh, wrote, 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 isn't it? Wrote to Pope John the 22nd Pope John the 22nd after the English stole the stone of Schoon uh, Schoon it's pretty it's like Scone isn't it but Schoon speaking of a line of kings and the timeline of the people of Israel could it be that the Scots are one of the lost tribes of Israel who were driven out of the Holy Land that's just a picture of Iona of course this is a fake stone of schoon. There's various ones, various websites about that. Um, perhaps the greatest work is the exquisite Book of Kells, which dates from around 800 AD, currently on display in Trinity College, Dublin. So, well, shortly after this, in 806 AD came the first king of the Viking raids when many of the monks were slaughtered and their work destroyed and Ireland switched from Celtic Christianity to Roman rule for the first time in its history. So I'm not entirely certain, you know, according to this article anyway, which uh, some of it was by Ben Johnston there. Not sure if uh, the Book of Kells was written in an isle. I you know, an island in Scotland or Ireland. But, uh, uh, because I know that the the Christian Irish, before the Vikings came, had various islands they went to. Uh, I'll try and leave a few links to websites and videos about Irish and Scottish history because linguistically they tie back to Israel, which, I, which I'll show you as well. The Celtic Church, lacking central control and organisation, diminished in size and stature over the years to be replaced by the much larger, stronger Roman Catholic Church, which practised the mixed pagan religion of the Romans, exercised a hierarchical priesthood, a step away 
from the apostolic biblical model. Even Iona was not exempt from these changes and in 1203, a nunnery on the order of the black nuns established the present day Benedictine Abbey was built. The Abbey was victim to the Reformation, lay in ruins until 1900. No, the turn of the 19th century, 20th century. No part of the uh, St. Columbus original buildings have survived. Okay. Stone of Schoon, and a little bit more about that, known as the Stone of Jacob, which the Scots brought over uh, from Greece and sky there as they said they are migrated from uh, and they see 113 un unbroken line of 113 kings from Israel crowned on that stone that's in 1320 giving much biblical inspiration to many a Scottish Jacobite army Jacobites, yes. Once or after um, Yaakov, Jacob. James is another name for Jacob. And so King James Bible that we have today is the King Yaakov Bible, King, King Israel Bible, if you want to call it that. Commissioned an accurate Bible translation from the majority text, known as the Textus Receptus, the received text used in Antioch is one of the noted places where the first Christians really studied the Word of God and obviously uh, the Lord used them. It was finished in 1611, a true masterpiece much like the William Tinsdale Bible before it. The KJV has been revised around a dozen times, one of the most accurate being a recent version in 1985 by J.P. Green known as the KJ3. The authorised version was known as the standard from which the Empire Britain should be run, but has been thrown out of the most churches now, and the common law of the people is being replaced by corporate or canon law. Um, so just simultaneously, you know, as the nation stopped using the King James Bible, this corporate and canon law has just come in. You, you notice that happening maybe a lot of you won't connect you know the, the dots but that's exactly what's happened it's like a Britain maybe in America as well they're giving up the roots of their faith understanding what true biblical commandments are and the laws are in the Bible and we're just getting like corporate and canon law just taking our kids away locking you up for no reason yeah, that's why, because the standard has gone. The standard of the Bible has vanished from the churches. We're getting all these modern versions in. In 1690, the Reformation swept Britain when Catholicism was banned after the great persecution of the Dark Middle Ages saw Christians being burnt at the stake, much like in Roman times at the dawn of Christianity. Equality still pervades in the land, only just though. Yet the Bible in Romans 11 talks about the natural branch he's coming to salvation, predicts great falling away from the true doctrine and a turning against biblical precepts in the last days just before Jesus Christ's second coming. The Scots are now a population of around 40 million worldwide, so you can break that down very, very briefly. Um, talking about around about 5 million in Scotland, which has remained the same for a hundred years uh, we took many Irish immigrants when they were having famines and now these I mostly these Irish immigrants were Catholics and most of them haven't um, decided to op crack open a Bible and read it and thank God for you know Scotland and different nations taking them in and instead they hate Scotland and they hate Britain like as if they've, you know, really, yeah, there's a bit of a history there, but, you know, uh, get rid of the Catholic Church, that's the answer. That's just my philosophy. <laughs> then you've got another 5 million Scots in Canada, huge. It's 
population of Scots in Canada compared to its uh, 20 odd million or 30 million total um, French Canadians and so on and then you've got another 5 million or so in America you've got another 5 or 6 million Scots Irish in America so you've got about you know it's probably nowhere near um, as many from Africa right but you know and then you've got another few million in Australia in different places in the world it makes it up to a run about 40 40 million um, used to be the forefront of medical technological and philosophical breakthroughs yet is now affected or this nation now is affected by drugs epidemics obviously alcohol has been known for the Scots to drink alcohol high abortion recently very I think one of the highest abortion rates in Europe I mean you, you hang around this area of Scotland right here it's got you know the highest crime rates in Europe the highest uh, abortion rates and you name it we even did a study on the fast food fast deaths <laughs> right there so uh yeah we're in the last days man so this study is about Hebrew and Gaelic here we've got 452 Hebrew words uh, with phonetic meaning translation okay and over here we got we got a study by Oxford University describing the root words of over half of Hebrew roots words in the Gaelic language and so you can see the very strong connection between Irish and Scottish Gaelic um, and the Hebrew uh, language try and leave these links below point 114 from that study says the ancient British language no doubt Yahweh also ensured that there would be a remnant of people speaking the ancient tongues more closely related to Hebrew as a witness to our origins. If, like many others, you have given up on churches or even given up on God, know that you are special in God's sight. And that includes those who are not Scottish, by the way. But, you know, sometimes uh, I give these flyers out and mostly it's to Muslims or Scots or just depends you may find some link between your own because I know by the way that I, I wouldn't be giving this particular one out but I know that there's, there's many of the lost tribes of Israel within the nation of Islam that's, that's just a side note by the way and for you Muslims who, who watch my videos do you know that the, the first mosques within Islam all pointed to not Mecca, but Petra. Did you know that? Did you know that? That possibly your prophet Muhammad wasn't from Mecca at all? That possibly he stayed around Petra, which was a trading capital? You know, where, where the, the main trade route was in the Middle East? Just Just a little side note there for you Muslims. Let's continue with this. Uh, yeah, few are as strong um, in evidence as the Scots being part of the lost tribes of Israel. British Israel have done studies of the five Celtic tribes coming from the Middle East, perhaps Israel, to eventually settle in Britain, but the Anglo Saxons do not have a linguistic attachment to Israel only in Irish, Scots, Gaelic is there strong evidence of a Semitic language being spoken in the British Isles. Evidence of diet is also to be considered as the Gales were not well known to keep unclean animals. There's even a rumour that football was invented in Scotland by shepherds using a pig's bladder as a ball. And uh, I think I mentioned that um, you know, that used to be they used to keep a Saturday Sabbath just after you know they started using a Roman calendar again I don't believe that's 
that's a biblical but you know the law of you might like in Israel there used to be wild boars in Britain even wolves bears lynx and lemmings various types of lemmings that's not a Mandela effect a recent discussion was made in Parliament to introduce wolves again but the wolves are the royal family and they would end up shooting them of course well this is an ancient map of you know Hadrian's Wall from the west coast there Solway Firth is that Bowness right across to Newcastle as you can see in the map um, it was built by the Romans in 122 to keep out the Britons and the Picts going through the heart of the northern English city of Newcastle with the Tyne River naturally separating those first ancient borders the Britons share heritage with the Gaels, the Gauls, the Irish who were thought to be referred to as the Galatians I'll explain a little bit why, where they get this name from an earlier point in history as we read in our Bibles the Galatians were rebuked by the Apostle Paul possibly for continuing animal sacrifice now it's arguable why the Apostle Paul rebuked the Galatians I think they were possibly trying to keep laws and statutes Levitical laws and statutes that was no longer needed you know they weren't um, showing the proper faith in the Lord maybe lacking in spiritual gifts and so on that type of thing the lack of evidence that they were born again so I think uh, the apostle was just seeing them probably just go back to their ancient ancient roots which uh, of Judaism the Gauls may have included some Levites, Reubenites, Manassites, Gadites who are the main warrior tribe of Israel so Gad, Gaul, you know that's probably one of the main tribes in the, in, in the Galatians but the Levites uh, had no part of the land of their own so they're right throughout Israel so there's Levites within all the lost tribes of Israel Anglo-Saxons sometimes claim lineage from the tribe of Ephraim although there is far less evidence for this claim Ephraim and Dan were responsible for introducing idolatry into Israel perhaps as they did not did also to the, the church after Constantine united Roman Catholicism with Christianity in 321 both Dan and Ephraim are counted as lost tribes who will remain lost and will not be mentioned were not mentioned by the Apostle John in the book of Revelation the people of Wales call themselves in ancient Welsh Braith ye Braithen, which means Braiths of Britain Breaths of Britain this means the Covenanters you know the, Scot the Scots have got a very long history about the Covenanters you can check a lot of that out uh, it's the only nation in the world except for Israel itself which has a national covenant with uh, the God of the Bible so that's quite quite a serious thing um, only the Israelites and only the Scots have got a national covenant which is not taught in schools by the way in Scotland I wonder if the Scottish government will start teaching that the early settlers in Wales and the southern England were the Simo Simoni the descendants of the tribe of Simeon possibly and you've got uh, wh what you had there is the Cornish language uh, being being banned I think by the uh, the Anglos or the Angles you know the, the English the English themselves spoke a, f a form of, of German when they came over and they started to conquer the southern part of Britain which later became English it's a Latin based language it's not a Semitic based language like uh, Gaelic is ancient Irish history okay early Irish history reveals that the first parliament, uh, permanent settlers in Ireland were called the Midians after their leader and were of the Patriarch Jacob and were said to have come from the shores of the Oxen, Black Sea that's from the History of Ireland by Moore, Volume 1, page 63 
very possible that some of these descendants of Jacob or grandchildren migrated to Ireland during the time of grievous famine that struck the Middle East in Joseph's time around 1707 BC. That famine lasted seven years and struck the whole Middle East and was very grievous. This was about the time the Numidians entered Ireland according to Irish history. The Numidians dwelt in Ireland from 1709-1492 BC. During the time most of the descendants of Israel were in Egypt, before the time of the Exodus, the Numidians were conquered by African sea rovers called Fomorians, and a colony of them fled to Greece, where other Israelites and Danites had settled after leaving Egypt. They later returned to Ireland, now known as the Firbolgs. Is that how you pronounce that? They were the first people to establish royal authority over Ireland, dividing the land into five provinces. This time, after ruling about 30 to 40 years, a new tribe conquered the Firbolgs, called the Thua de Danin, uh, or Danan. Okay. This tribe also dwelt in Greece and then migrated to Denmark and Norway and then to Ireland. The Thuatha de Danan became the sole masters of the country. In time they were dispossessed of the country by another group of Israelites, our heroes, the Milesian Scots, says Moore in the History of Ireland. In the process of time, the Tuatha da Danan were themselves dispossessed of their sway, a successive invasion from the coast of Spain having put an end to the Dananian dynasty <laughs> and transferred the sceptre into the hands of that Milesian Scotic race, which through so long a series of succeeding ages supplied Ireland with their kings. This celebrated colony, though coming directly from Spain, was originally, we are told, of Scythic race. Scythians. Wow. Migrated, really, to a number of different places. It's the Celts, the Standing Stones themselves, right throughout Europe. Um you know southern England Wales and so on and so on in 1917 the Balfour Declaration now Lord Balfour was from from Edinburgh he was Scottish in a letter to Lord Rothschild Sea Flyer 5 saw the first signs of modern day Jews going back to their homeland but at the great expense of the Palestinians. After millions of Jews lost their lives in death camps in Europe during World War II, many of these Jews being anti-Zionist, Orthodox Jews do not believe in entering Israel again without the Messiah. It sparked a great appeal to the UN to recognize Israel again as the Jewish homeland. Orthodox Jews worldwide condemned the actions of the Zionist Jews but what does the Bible say about it? Of course, there's a fantastic confusion. But the way the Apostle Paul teaches it, there's our natural branches which God deals with. Yes, a lot of them are rebellious. A lot of them are extremely wicked, according to the parable here in Jeremiah 24. Yeshua Jesus in Matthew 24 speaks of the fig tree being in the land again. Figs, according to Jeremiah 24, are natural, not converted Jews. The Bible in Revelation in Zechariah 14 speaks of an attack on the land around, you know, the, the generation, 70th year of the fig tree. 2018 is going to be a key year with Donald Trump announcing plans to relocate American embassy away from the Danite city of Tel Aviv to the Jewish capital of Jerusalem. With the Sanhedrin persecuting Messianic Jews strongly last year, by banning marriages between believers, we must be close to these prophecies.
coming to pass and we're at the it's at the doors my friends if you can't see that you know with uh you know missile warnings in um you know hawaii past couple of days if you can't see that this year is going to be absolutely you know i i could say it could be the worst the worst year in history you know think about that i mean it's going to be bad Britam is a Jewish website pertaining to the lost tribes of Israel around the world but as Paul taught in his epistles a Jew is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God it's from the book of Romans again finally according to the study by David Flynn he's done very good studies on you know um the Dome of the Spirits to Mecca and so on, 666 nautical miles. Here um, there are 1948.4 nautical miles from the London Stone in Cannon Street to the Dome of the Spirits in Jerusalem. Point four representing Israel's creation in May of 1948. Some things are just meant to be I guess, but will you enter? The New Jerusalem. I always just like to add a little something at the end. They're, they think they're coming to the end and it's just, you know. It's information about maybe the, the lost tribes of Israel, but uh, must be born again. Jesus says, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If you're teaching anything other than what Jesus taught, then... Let's get back to what Jesus taught, shall we? His real name is Yeshua. May the Lord bless and keep you. Thanks for listening. See you next video.